Hey friends, Jennifer Donnelly, the queen of section eight here. So I've been a little, a little quiet on some of these socials, especially around, um, sorry, I don't like the shadow for some reason. Anyway, um, some of the socials around some of my property stuff here lately, especially with these lives, I just go in spurts, you know, sometimes I don't want to do them. Um, and I just want a little bit of a break from my phone, but I told a group of people that I spoke to a couple of weeks ago, the way I do these is they're very low tech, as you probably can tell. As things come up in my world with my rental property portfolio that I think would be helpful, I just pop on and do a video. So I'm doing this one on my phone today. Hopefully the quality is good and hopefully there's something here that's helpful. So here's what I'm talking about today. Semi-annual property inspections. So we inspect all of our units, I've got 39 doors right now, twice a year. So I wanna tell you a little bit about how we do that, why we do that, um, kind of what it's taught me over the last few years. Hopefully I can throw in a fun little story along the way too. If, as you're watching, if you have questions, whether you're watching me now live or um, catching this later on Facebook or YouTube or wherever else I decide to put it, um, throw in questions and um, yeah, we'll just go from there. So. Let me talk about process a little bit. Here's what we do, here's how we prepare for our semi-annual property inspections. Uh, we like to, from a timing perspective, I like to do them in late spring. This might actually be summer right now. We just finished them up. So we've got, you know, with this many doors, it takes a few days to do it and we've been doing it for over the last month. So I'll call this late spring, but you know, whatever this time of year. And then also late fall might be early winter. Here's the reason I like to do these during this time. In late spring, that gives me enough time to see um, from like an, especially an exterior perspective. Are the, is the exterior being maintained in terms of the lawn, the landscaping? Do we have little trees growing out of the gutters? Things like that. And the reason that I really like to do them in late fall, um, the, the one main thing um, well, two things really. At that point, the trees have typically here in St. Louis lost most or all of their leaves. So if we've got gutters that are overflowing with leaves, we can see that. And then the other thing is if there's uh, outside hoses still connected to the outside spigot or faucet, I don't know which one do you guys call it? We can disconnect those. They stay connected through the winter time, of course, they can um, burst and well, they can freeze and then cause water damage. And I like to avoid that kind of stuff. And usually by, I mean, it's usually like around the 1st of December-ish that we're doing these. Usually by the 1st of December, it's still not been cold enough long enough to have those kinds of issues. And that typically comes kind of in like January, February here in St. Louis. So we wanna to get to that before then. So that's the timing perspective. And then from a prep standpoint, we let the tenants know, first of all, I like to tell the tenants when I'm moving them in, even before that, when I do their initial home visit during the screening, hey, this is part of our process. You can expect us to come by your property for our maintenance inspections a couple of times a year, I remind them again whenever they move in. And then when it comes down to the day, you know, we set the schedule. Kim does most of this prep. You guys have seen Kim in some of my videos. She works for me, she's a gem. We have a great time together. Um, so most of this is actually on her. This is why I'm saying we, because when I'm saying we right now, I'm kind of meaning Kim, but I go with her and do all these inspections with her. She just does most of the prep work. Anyway, we kind of set our routes um, and then we will text the tenants. We only legally have to give them 24 hours notice, but I like to give them a couple of days. I mean, if somebody's going to come into my house and I, you know, some of the times they want to prepare, clean up or whatever, um, I would, I would sure like to, to know ahead of time. So we try to give them a couple of days notice and you know, just text them and let them know we're gonna be at your property for our twice a year inspection. Um, we, I call them maintenance inspections. That seems to go over you know, fine. And then we go and we give them a pretty good window because sometimes we're into stuff, right? So I don't wanna have like this tight little window that's like, I'm gonna beat it in this 30 minute window. I wanna give them a lot of time, um, like a five or six hour window. That way if something comes up in our day and we're running ahead or behind, then you know, no big deal. I'm let them know they don't have to be home, but if they're not home, we are gonna go ahead and let ourselves in. So that's what we do. And then we take three things with us, two pieces of paper and one, um, I guess, 
supply, if you will. So I do have a, um, an inspection checklist that we take and that's what we keep and fill things out on and keep that internally. And then I also have a one pager. It's mostly just lines, but it just says, you know, we did the inspection today. Here's a little bit about what we found. Um, I started doing that probably about a year ago because what was happening was we would do our inspection. The tenant wouldn't be there very often. We would find things that I would wanna let them know or that they need to fix. And so then I was having to go back to the office, contact them, lots of extra work no good. So I wanted to make it more efficient. So now anything that I want to let them know about, I just write on the little sheet that says, here's what we did. Here's what we found. Um, here's what I need you to do very often. And I take a picture of that and save that to their file. So it's just more, um, more efficient that way. And then the other thing we take is furnace filters. So let's have a little chat about furnace filters. That's a very exciting thing to talk about. Um, so in our lease, it says that the tenants have to change the filter. And when they move in, we give them a clean one in the unit. We give them one more and we say from here on out, it's up to you to change these. We show them how to change it. And then we remind them in our newsletter that we send out. I'd like to send that monthly. Sometimes it's more like every other month or quarterly. But as you can imagine, some tenants are perfect at it, right? They change it on a schedule. I even have a couple that even have hung their own schedule on their furnace, like take a little piece of paper. They do a great job and some are okay at it. And some, even though I've showed them, we've talked about it a hundred times, never changed anything. So we take two filters for each unit on our inspections. And I, you guys, I could technically, because of the lease, I could charge those back to them. Uh, I suppose I could even charge for our time doing that if they're not changing them. But here's the thing. I'm not going to step over dollars to pick up pennies on this. At the end of the day, I want those furnace filters changed. I don't want any fuss about it. So if I can drop, what is a filter? I don't know, 10 bucks, something like that, like $20 to help maintain these units. I'm going to do that with no issue. And, and that's it. So those are the things that we take. I also have a little tiny toolkit. I am not handy, not handy, but sometimes there's like a little thing that we can fix. And then I usually take um, a lock box in case we have something that we need a lock box, um, like a you know, key or something that we need a lock box for, of course, uh, Sharpie pens, clipboard, whatever. So that's the, like the prep. And then keys. So um, here's how I handle keys. If you watched me before, this is going to be old news, but um, locks and keys, how, here's how we do that. So I use a self-showing system um, for when the properties are set up, you know, are, are listed and leasing. It's called ShowMojo. Go look that up if you haven't heard of that before. But that company also sells digital deadbolts. They call them Mojo Locks. You don't have to get them from ShowMojo tons of companies in the world sell digital deadbolts. So if you don't want to go down that route, I highly recommend them. You guys are not expensive. You can typically manage them online. They use cellular um, data and digital deadbolts are great. You can give your tenants uh, a code to get in, you know, for the life of their tenancy. And then when we come on site, I don't even need a key. I just need my phone. I just hold the phone up to the door, boop, boop, lets us in. So that's what we do for most of our properties. We have some still that we have not put those deadbolt, those digital deadbolts on. And so for those, um, I got this idea from my pal Dixie Decker, somebody tag her, or maybe I will when I get off of here. Um, this is how she does it. So here's what we do on it. We put a, um, a deadbolt and then a handle with no lock. I'm gonna say that again, deadbolt on the front door, no lock in the handle. This is what I do on my digital ones too. We never put a lock on that handle. It's just too easy from the inside to turn it, close it, and then forget their keys and they lock themselves out. But if they have to insert the key to lock the door, they're not gonna lock themselves out unless they lose a key, which is kind of a different situation, feels different to me. So it just reduces lockouts by a ton. The tenants then have a key that lets them, of course, into their unit into their property, but I have a master key. We have a master key that goes for all of our units. So I'm not like carrying around a big old jangly thing of <laughs> keys, right? I just have one key that lets me into all of my properties. So anyway, 
If you don't have a digital deadbolt system, you're obviously going to need keys to get in. If you've got like a gajillion keys for your properties, um, you can condense down. There's a good way to do that. So that's how we handle that. Then, of course, we show up on inspection day. Um, obviously, if the tenant is there, you know, they let us in and, and that sort of thing. If they're not there, we'll, again, let ourselves in. And then we're going to walk around. If they're there, the first thing we'll say is, hey, is there any maintenance issues that you haven't let us know about yet? Sometimes they have one or two. Sometimes they don't. And then there is things that they just don't notice that we're paying attention to. So here's the kind of things that we are typically looking for. So I'm really on the lookout for health and safety items first and foremost. So if I've got decks, railings, things like that, especially walking up to the property, I've got you know, a fair number of those on the properties, we're checking to see are those in good shape, are they sturdy or not. Over time, they come loose. Right, so really, really common that you've got either deck boards, you know, steps or railings or whatever that are loose. Um, so, so a lot of that on the entry, you know, into the property. Then once we're inside, if you're a super detail oriented person, these inspections are going to take you a really long time. Like if you're going through like line by line and you know, checking every single box. That's not how we do it. Kim and I are detailed enough, but we're not super duper detailed. Plus we've been doing this for a while, so we kind of know what to look for. So we're just really kind of scanning rooms. Do we see anything that we, you know, didn't know about before? Is there a new hole in the wall? Um, you know, is there a door off the hinges? Stuff like that, that, oh, surprise. And we just, we will typically not make a stink about that, but we will document it. Um, and then we will look and check every toilet to see if it's loose. And we will check under every single sink to see if we have water leaks. Um, beyond that, I'm trying to think of kind of the common things that we're looking for. The uh, We'll check the bathroom fan, the vent fan in the bathroom because over time, if it doesn't work or if they're not using it, that also can be an issue. Um, you're gonna get moisture in that bathroom and you're gonna start to have paint kind of bubble, you know, things like that. We're gonna check the tub to see, does it need to be recocked? Um, who else, who, anybody else that's on here that does these on a regular basis that has some properties, let me know the other things that you commonly see and that you typically like to check for. Um, down in the basement, we're gonna look to see, you know, uh, we're gonna check the furnace, we're gonna look at the water heater, do we have leaks anywhere? Another really common one is sometimes they don't have the, um, the dryer vent hooked all the way up or it's not well hooked up or something like that. And so we're checking to make sure that that's all situated properly so that they're not blowing um, lint, you know, everywhere. That's no good. Then we're gonna change out the filter if they have not been changing them and leave them one more. And then here's the kind of stuff, you know, so here's the thing, I'm not going in like, trying to kind of do a gotcha thing, right? Like what, what can I find that they're doing wrong? But I'm gonna be on the lookout for stuff that, that's causing damage, they shouldn't be doing, they're breaking the lease, all that kind of stuff. So sometimes I go into a property and there's really not, there's, there's really no maintenance that I can see that I'm not aware of, they're taking good care of it. So it's like, hey, thanks for taking care of the property, here's your little note, see ya. Sometimes there's a whole lot of other stuff too, right? Um, so if, the right now one of the big things with the lawn the, most of the lawns are mowed that's not really an issue there because the tenants are responsible for the lawn and they typically take care of that um but the big the issue that i see a lot is there'll be weeds growing up against the house if they've got landscaping it is get becoming overgrown sometimes the fence line is becoming overgrown this isn't everybody of course but it's it's a significant number so that's typically something i have to remind them for the lease, we talked about this before you were approved. We talked about this when you moved in. You know, you've got to, to take care of these. And I don't I don't like lecture, right? I'll typically write, hey, can you please have, you know, whoever's taking care of your lawn, clean up around the house, the weeds, cut back the, you know, anything that's overgrown the landscaping and the fence line. The end. Um, and then when I'm walking in the house, I'm sniffing. I don't even, I don't do it on purpose. I'm going to just do, um, because I don't allow smoking in my properties. So 
and I have a pretty, you know, I mean, I'm sensitive to it. If you're not a smoker, you're going to be sensitive to it. So the first thing I'm paying attention to is like, you know, do I smell something that I shouldn't? Cigarette smoke, more commonly, honestly, and if you're a landlord, you know this, um, is marijuana. And then I'm also smell like, do I smell dogs? Do I smell cat dogs? You know, if you're kind of taking care of yourself, maybe you don't smell those as much, but sometimes cats, like, especially if they're people, they shouldn't, they'll really like a cat be will knock you down. Um, so I'm just, you know, do I smell anything that I shouldn't be smelling? Would you believe in... 40-ish properties. Um, I think we only found one contraband pet that I didn't know about. And here's how I found it. Um, all was fine. Go into the garage. You got like a tuck under your garage and this property and the cat pee smell. Like, <laughs> knocked me down. So funny little story for you. Kim, she used to be our nose ninja. She had a great sniffer and then she got COVID and her sniffers broke now. So that's really sad. Um, she can still smell, but it's just not nearly as good as it used to be. And sometimes she'll just say something smells weird. And that was a situation in this house. And I walked into the, she, she went into the garage. She's like, something smells weird in here. And I walked in behind her and I'm like, oh, it's cat pee. It's a lot of cat pee. <laughs> so, um, and then we found a, a a a bag of litter, you know, stashed in the in the in the garage or something like that as well. So then, of course, we know we have a, a kitty somewhere in the property. I never did see the kitty, um, but you know. Um, and then sometimes with smoke, this one always makes me laugh. This happened yesterday. Oh, uh, and I will. I wrote on the paper. You know, the house smells like marijuana. There's no smoking in the house, as a reminder. Um, and then they'll say, well, we aren't, we're not smoking in here. Okay. Um, I don't have a ton of that, but we definitely have, you know, a little bit of it here and there. So this has been one of my learnings. If you are new, if you are getting into this business, if you have not done inspections, guys, you're going to find stuff. People are going to live in these houses. So something that I had to learn early on is there's going to be a very wide range of living in these properties. And you're not, you know, you don't have a museum, right? I mean, so there's kids. If you've ever had a kid, especially if you had more than one kid, kids are hard on stuff. So sometimes they're going to do damage. They're going to scuff up the walls. They're going to get their little handprints on the walls. You don't have to panic over this stuff. It's okay. They're allowed to live in the property. It just needs to be cleaned up to a reasonable state whenever they go. So, um, you know, don't panic over that kind of thing. Um, and the way I, we, so a couple things, one, once we're there in the property, if with maintenance stuff, you know, that we see, we're writing that down. If it's something that needs to be taken care of, like, ASAP, that's typically fire hazard, um, which the biggest fire hazard we come across is that they've just got stuff kind of close to the water here and that we don't like that and the furnace. Um, but more water stuff, so like a leaking sink, um, you know, drain or, you know, something like that, we're going to get on those right away. So Kim will literally, you know, while we're standing there, call our plumber, Jeff, if you, I don't even, I don't think our plumber's even on here anymore, but um, he's great because she'll call him right away and we'll get that kind of stuff scheduled. And then, um, you know, if it's not as urgent, then we'll go back to the office and kind of prioritize those later. And then if it's a tenant issue, something that they need to handle, unless it's pretty bad. Again, I don't go overboard. I just write down like, Hey, lawn needs to be mowed. No smoking in the house. Here's one I got yesterday. Sofa and love seat, like for the inside of your house on the deck, not covered, just on the deck. Well, guys, that's going to be pretty yucky here pretty soon. So on that one, I let the tenant know you know, these are not outside furniture. They're going to get rotten and stinky and moldy. They can't be here. They got to go. And so I just wrote 
These need to be gone by this date. Please let us know when they're gone. Send us pictures. We'll follow up on this date. And if they're not gone, we'll come get them and we'll bill them back to you. Bill that back to you. And then we'll just follow up on that. So that's typically how I handle things that the tenant needs to take care of. Um, you know, I, again, I don't, I don't panic. I don't go overboard. And really, I don't even get like all crazy about like lease violation notices and stuff like that. I just write it down. But then I, I do follow up to make sure that it's been rectified. Like with the kitty, I'm going to go check on that here in two weeks as well. On that one, I did call it, I left it on the note and I did call the tenant the next day and say, hey, you know, you know, you, we, we don't have a pet policy. You certainly haven't notified, even asked about this cat. I can smell the cat. Um, so we discussed, you know, her plan for kitty's going to go. And then she's um, said that she was working on getting rid of the smell and told me what she was doing. So I'm going to follow up on that. But that's how we handle those sorts of things. Then we come back to the office and then Kim and I will go through pictures and notes next week, create work orders, prioritize, um, that kind of thing. Here's, here's what the inspections have taught me. Um, and some of this is like not the best, doesn't feel great, but I think the one thing that I, I consistently think about is it, sometimes you just can't catch on everything in screening. And I'm a screening, tenant screening fanatic. I mean, I am, I'm really tough on screening. I, you know, teach a course on it. I talk about it all the time and I feel that I am generally good at it. I don't know that I would say very good, but generally good at it. Um, and it works most of the time. But we have a couple of tenants that I fully screened, we approve, we did the home visit. And I go in their house now and I'm like, ooh, really wish you wouldn't have approved this one. And here's why. They don't take great care of the property. Um, it's extremely cluttered and because it's cluttered or maybe, you know, it's just how they live. It's also dirty. So I, I've never seen a really, really cluttered house that was clean. I've seen an organized house that was dirty, but I, I because what happens if you have all this clutter and I'm not talking about like stuff in boxes stacked neatly against walls. I'm talking just junk thrown everywhere. It's impossible to really clean, right? So if there's just clothes and toys and boxes and tons of stuff, they're everywhere. It's going to be really dirty too because it just can't not be. Um, so I have a couple of those that, you know, I go back and look at our screening. I think about the home visit. I, I would approve them again today. So I share that sort of as an honest truth, because again, I talk about this a lot in my videos. There's all this like, um, all these gurus in the world that will tell you how great, all the good stuff about being a rental property owner and a landlord. And if you just screen, it's gonna be perfect. We're dealing with humans here, right? And so I'm not sure on these situations if they live differently then and things have changed, or if when they go to move out, they will be able to clean it up, clean it, fix whatever damage has been done, and it will look great again, because I don't know, they're still there. Um, I've had a couple that I have approved along the way that have you know, moved out. I don't have a ton of move outs, um, who I was nervous about them moving out with what kind of condition the property was gonna be in whenever they left. Um, because it was really cluttered and messy and dirty and, you know, both of those situations, the place looked great whenever they moved out. So it's, it's certainly possible. And I always say, when I talk about home visits, what I'm really looking for is can they clean up well enough to get their security deposit back? And that's sort of the mentality I have when I'm going on a home visit on the initial screening. So anyway, we'll find out on these couple, um, how I feel, you know, whenever they move out. But I share that with you to say, um, I, I know now it's not going to be a perfect hundred percent pick perfect tenants every single time life happens, things happen, and maybe it's that things have happened in these folks lives and they're overwhelmed. I mean, 
I've certainly had years and times where our house was much more of a wreck than it is today, especially when our kids were little. You know, we had kids like, what, they were one, five, and seven at one point, you know, and I know that my house was more of a wreck than it was, than it is now, just because as they're older, they are, they just, you know, they're not as messy and I'm not as overwhelmed, frankly. So that could be what's going on too. But again, I just share that with you because if you're dealing with that with a tenant, um, especially if you're a, a kind of a newer landlord and um, feeling kind of discouraged, it's just kind of part of the deal, friends. That's just, you know, how it goes. Another thing I've learned is that over time, our, we have been able to kind of better train our tenants on property maintenance, changing out air filters, stuff like that. So I've only been in this business for four years. So I've only been doing these semi-annual inspections for a couple of years. And what I'm finding is that our folks have been with us for a long time are better about doing a lot of those maintenance things that are their responsibility now than they were whenever they first moved in because they've heard us talk about this and we talk about it and talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. So that helps me to know that, that these are worthwhile. Um, and just so much of what I, people that I hear, see, listen to that are having tenant problems, a lot of this stuff can be kind of nipped in the bud if we're doing these inspections on a regular basis. So if you have properties and you're not doing those inspections, I would highly recommend them. Um, I think that's it. I don't think anybody has put in any questions. Hopefully this is helpful to you. Certainly pop in questions later if I can answer anything else and I will see you next time.